All right. Good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us for our cruise ship photography webinar this evening. Um, please feel free, if you've got any questions throughout the presentation, you can just type them in the comment box so long, and then at the end of the presentation, we'll have a question and answer session. All right, so I just want to start off by introducing myself. My name's Jackie, and um, this is me over here with the dolphin. I actually worked as a cruise ship photographer for three years, also went through OVC, and I did this program. So sometimes I was the photographer, as you can see over there, and sometimes I was the dolphin. <laughs> and then over here, we've got my colleague Lana. She also worked as a cruise ship photographer. She did a few contracts as well. And Lana is based at the OVC Stellenbosch office. So some of you might have dealt with Lana already. All right, so moving along. Um, eligibility to become a cruise ship photographer. You would need to be aged between 21 to 35. So the minimum age requirement is 21. They're very strict about that. But the maximum age is not set in stone. So if you are 36 or 37 and you've still got quite a young personality and a passion to work with people and give good customer service, then you would be eligible to do an interview and our partners would make the decision whether you'd be accepted or not. Obviously, you would be applying to be a photographer, so you need to have a passion for photography. You don't need to have any previous photography experience because you will be taught all of that during the three weeks. But you do need to have a passion for obviously taking photos of people. You need to be prepared to work long hours. So. Being a cruise ship photographer is not a normal eight to five job. You work different shifts. So some days you might start at six in the morning. You might work through until lunchtime and then perhaps have a short break and then work again in the evening. And it's seven days a week. So there's no off days. Sometimes you might get an off evening. You might sometimes get some time off in the port, but you will be working long hours. All right, and obviously you need to have five-star customer service. So you need to be a friendly person, somebody who can deal well with, first of all, deal well in a team, and also deal well with customers and guests and possible guest complaints. Sometimes you have difficult guests, but on cruise ships, the customer is always right. So you need to have that type of personality. And the cruise liners that we're currently dealing with, they do accept some tattoos. So if you've got a, perhaps a tattoo of a star or maybe an angel or something like that, those are normally accepted as long as it's nothing offensive. If you've got a some like demonic signs on your arm or maybe like a monster or something that's a little bit scary, um, often those would be declined. But if you do have any tattoos, then what we recommend before we even start your application is just send a photo and a description of your tattoos to your consultant. And from there, we would get those tattoos approved by our partners before we continue with the application. All right, then obviously, it's also very important to have a clear criminal record. So you will need to do a police clearance before you accept it to cruise ships. So if you've got any prior offenses, any criminal record, then unfortunately you wouldn't be eligible for this program. Then you would need to complete a successfully complete the three-week photography course. That course is done here in South Africa in the Western Cape. It is a full day for Monday to Friday, so you would need to make yourself available to stay in the Western Cape for the full three weeks and to complete that training before you would be able to join the ships. You obviously need to have a valid passport. At the moment, we can only recruit South Africans and EU passport holders. But if you do have um, a foreign passport, just chat to your consultant about that. And we would be able to just clarify whether you would be accepted or not at this stage. But next year, we'll, we'll have a few more cruise lines that we'll be working with as well. So it might not be possible for you right now, but it could be an option for next year. All right, then most importantly, you need to be fit and healthy. So in order to join a cruise line, you need to pass a full medical, and that is blood tests, TB tests, they take x-rays, they literally do a full medical from head to toe. So 
if you've got any pre-existing medical conditions or if you're on any chronic medication, you would need to just uh, disclose that before we start your application and you would need to discuss that with your consultants so we could first get you approved before we continue with your application. Because the full medical is only valid for two years, you would only do the full medical test once you've actually received the job offer from the cruise line, which would normally only happen after the training. So if you do think that there's any possibility that you might not pass a full medical, then you would need to just let us know before we, before we proceed further. You need to be fluent in English. Obviously, um, you need to be able to communicate well with the guests. You don't necessarily have to be first language English, but you need to have a very good clear English accent and people need to be, under, to be able to understand you. All right, then, good qualities to have. So, as I mentioned, you need to be hardworking. This is really not a job for somebody who just wants to go on vacation and think you're going to lie on the beach and things like that. It's definitely not that type of program. Yes, definitely, that is one of the perks of working on a ship, but that comes after the hard work. You will be working in a big team, so you'll work with a group of other photographers and you will have managers as well from different countries. You're going to be working with people from all over the world with different cultures. People do things differently to the way you probably used to doing things. So it is very important that you can work well as a team player and that you can also take advice from other people and take orders from management. You can't go in there and think you know everything when you actually need to start as a junior photographer. So you would need to work well in the team and gradually get promoted and work your way up to the top. To be creative is um, obviously a bonus for being a photographer. But at the same time, this is not really um, a program would you, where you would go and show off your creativity. So a lot of the photography that you do on the ship is the same thing day in and day out. So you'll take pictures of guests coming on the gangway when they join the ship. You'll take pictures of the guests in the dining room at night when they're eating their dinner, around the pool, doing activities. You'll be taking the same type of pictures all day long. The only time where you really get the opportunity to be a little bit creative is if you shoot a wedding. So sometimes guests do come on board to get married. And if you are the wedding photographer, then obviously you can be creative and do do some wonderful creativity there. But just with your general day-to-day -day photography, it will be pretty much standard. And that is the training that you would receive during those three weeks. So they will train you on exactly how to take photographs as per the cruise line standards. All right, then it's very important that you need to be able to listen to instructions. So as I mentioned, you will have a manager, sometimes maybe two or three managers. You will have some senior photographers above you. So you need to be able to listen clearly to instructions and not just within your work environment. So obviously your job will be a, a, um, to be a photographer on the cruise lines, but also sometimes when you're on the ship, sometimes things do go wrong. So there could be a medical emergency, there could be a fire on the ship, and whenever there's an emergency like that, all of the crew get involved. So you would need to be able to listen carefully, take instructions from the captain, stay calm in situations like that, and you would need to be able to handle yourself in those type of situations. Then it's also very important that you have good sales skills. So you won't just be taking the photos on the ship, you'll also be selling the photos. So you, most of the photographs cost $10, some of them are $20, so that's about 150 to, to 300 rand that you would be selling one of your photos for. So you really need to come out and have good sales skills, need to be able to upsell, so you would just add on a frame for their beautiful cruise vacation picture. You would um, be able to sell them point-and-shoot cameras. There's a lot of gadgets in the photo gallery that you would be able to need to be able to sell, and then obviously you would earn commission on those sales as well. Then I've already mentioned the customer service part. You see that keeps coming up because that is really important. If you want to work on a cruise line, you really need to be prepared to give five-star customer service. 
All right, then you need to be a very independent person. So when working on ships, you will be surrounded by people all the time. You will either be around guests all the time or you'll be with your cabin mate or you'll be with your fellow photographers or your friends from other departments. But at the same time, it can be quite a lonely experience. So you can't really be somebody who's really dependent on your parents back home and get homesick and want to call mom every day because often you're not going to have any reception or any signal out at sea. So you need to be independent. You need to be someone who can stand on your own two feet and be able to travel the world without having to rely on anybody. Um, also, if you are planning to apply as a couple, you need to understand that you, there's no guarantee that you would be able to be placed on the same ship. So from that point of view, you need to be prepared to go on the contract and be by yourself and make new friends. You also need to be prepared to live at sea for six to eight months. So an average contract is six months. It can be extended up to eight, sometimes 10 months. The longest contract I ever did was 10 months. And literally, you are at sea for that entire time. So sometimes you will stop in the port. Maybe you'll have like an overnight in Bermuda, for example. You might have that night off and, you know, get the chance to go out and have a nice meal. But other than that, you're on board the ship and working 24-7 for those full six months. So you need to be prepared for that. And obviously, people are worried about seasickness. If you know that you're somebody who really gets seasick and motion sickness, then perhaps you need to chat to your doctor first and find out if this is something that you can do. But generally, it's nowhere near as bad as people expect. These cruise liners are literally like floating islands. So you're on a very big ship. You hardly ever feel the water below you unless there's really rough seas. Often there are those days, but those are few and far between. Okay, um, a typical day in the life of a cruise ship photographer, what you can expect. So obviously it's a lot of excitement. Each day is a different day. You might go to bed tonight and you could be in Jamaica and tomorrow you wake up and you might be in New York after traveling at sea for two days, for example. So you need to be prepared to wake up early in the morning. If you arrive at a port at 6 a.m., then the phot photographers need to get off the ship on the gangway before the guests. So you might have to start your shift at 5.30 in the morning so that you're ready to take photos of the guests when they're getting off the gangway, going off to their excursions. Um, you need to be prepared to take photos of guests because that is your prime job as a cruise ship photographer. But then, as I mentioned earlier, you're not just taking the photos. You could also be responsible for printing the photos. So depending on what your shift is, you might be um, responsible for working in the lab one cruise. And the lab is on board. So literally, once the photos are taken, they get sent down to the lab and the guys start printing them straight away. Then the photographers would go and pick up the photos from the lab take them up to the photo gallery and display all of the pictures beautifully in the gallery. And then the guests come and have a look at their pictures. At that stage, you would need to be able to sell the photos. And as I mentioned, upsell. So this is where your sales skills come in. And then also, sometimes they set up studios around the ship. So you might have a formal night where the guests get all dressed up in their fancy formal wear. And you would then go and set up your studio in that afternoon, set up the studio, get all the lights set up, just as, as you would in a normal professional studio. And then you'd be responsible for manning that studio throughout the night. So you'd be taking all the photos of the guests. And then at the end of the night, you would break down the studio, pack everything up and carry on with the rest of your responsibilities. So as you can see, it is an all round position. There's a lot involved with it. And once again, I keep mentioning you need to be prepared to work hard. All right. So the great thing about this program is obviously you'll live on board. So you will have a cabin which would normally be shared with one other person. 
some cruise some um, cruise ships do have a, a four berth cabin, which would mean there would be four people in the cabin. But there's not many of those ships around, so I've never been on a ship that's got four berths. It's normally just two people per cabin, and most of the time you would share the cabin with another photographer, so it would be your friend or your colleague. And always girls will be paired together, and obviously guards would be paired together. So in the cabin you have a bunk bed. And you have a bathroom that you would just share with your cabin mate. And then you have a small television and a small fridge and a small cupboard. So it is really a tiny, a tiny space. But all that you really do in your cabin is go there to shower and sleep. So you don't need to worry about being too claustrophobic. Um, if you do struggle from claustrophobia, then it, it could be an issue. But generally, it's really not – it's not that hectic. But remember, you're not staying in the guest cabin. So it's by no means a luxury cabin. It's just a place for you to, to shower and sleep. All right. Then – the return flight. So once you've received your job offer and you know which ship you're going to and you know what date you'll be joining the ship, um, your flights will be booked for you by the cruise line HR department. They will sort out all that for you. They will fly you from your hometown. If your ship is docking in Bayonne, New Jersey, for example, then they would fly you they would fly you to New Jersey and then you would stay over in a hotel for one night before joining the ship just so that you can get some rest, acclimatize, sort out your jet lag. And then the next day you'll join the ship and you'll literally start working from day one. So you will obviously have orientation. There will be people that are going to train you, show you what's expected of you. There's also quite a bit of um uh, like security and safety training that gets done during your first two weeks on board. So pretty much your first two to three weeks would just be about finding your feet and getting used to life on board a cruise ship. Obviously, all your meals are included as well. So you literally have no expenses on board. There is a what they call the crew mess, which is pretty much a – Restaurant just for the crew. So you eat your breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. And then throughout the days, if you miss the meal times, there are often snacks available. You can go and get yourself some cool drink. And um, the chefs are really great on board. They always have this, the best chefs, so it's really good food. And then obviously the biggest perk of this program is that you get to travel the world. So you really do, especially if you do quite a few contracts, you could possibly travel the entire world. It just depends on the cruise ship that you're on, what that itinerary would be. But you really will get to see most of the world by working as a cruise ship photographer. All right. Then the part that everybody wants to know, how much will I earn? So the exciting thing is that your salary will be tax-free, which means you don't get taxed in America, you won't be taxed in South Africa. So as a cruise ship photographer, you can expect to earn anything between $1,200 to $1,400, which is approximately 17 to about 21,000 Rand that you could earn as a as an entry-level cruise ship photographer. So obviously, as you get promoted and as you do more contracts, your salary will increase as your position moves higher. And also, you could earn more in commission as well. So those amounts that I gave you are pretty much an average, including commission. But if you are a rock star photographer and you do a lot of weddings and things like that, then obviously, you can make more money. All right. So with the, crew, the three weeks training that we offer, you are – going to get support from the course directors. So during those three weeks, you will get really intensive training. The first week will be just to train you about actual photography. So about lighting, about setting up a studio, about working with a camera, because you're going to be shooting on manual. So for those of you who have never done that type of photography, you will literally start from scratch. They will teach you everything about how to work a camera, how to take photographs, Cropping, editing, all of that gets done in the first week. And then the second and the third week is specifically cruise ship photography. So there you will get trained exactly how to take photos in the dining room, how the photos need to be um, presented, how you need to treat the guests, all those type of things will be covered during the, tr the three weeks training in South Africa. So by the time you join the ship, 
you will already be trained and know exactly what is expected of you of your job as a, as a photographer. Then during those three weeks, you'll also get interview guidance and the um, academy will also assist you with preparing for your interview. So you will do your interview via Skype with the cruise line and often that those interviews take place during the three weeks training. But for some people, you might have to wait one or two weeks after the course before you get your first interview with the cruise line. Then from there, the cruise line will take over. The HR department, once you've been offered the job, they will send you your job offer, you'll sign your contract, and then they will assist you with the entire process. So you will at that stage need to do your full medical, which I mentioned earlier will be your medical from head to toe. Um, you will get all the documents that you'll need to get your visa. So to work on a cruise line, you need to have a C1D visa and you would need to go for an in-person interview at the embassy in either Cape Town, Durban or Johannesburg. But all of that will get um, explained to you step by step. So throughout the whole process, there will be somebody to assist you with everything. All right, then the main benefits of doing this course is obviously to fast track your career at sea. So I don't know if any of you have previously tried to apply for a position on a cruise line. Um, most of you will know that if you go directly to the cruise line yourself, you can wait six to eight to 12 months before you even get a reply from them. Um, just simply because the cruise lines receive applications from thousands of people from all over the world. So with this course that we offer, this is, this is the fastest way to get a position on a ship without having to have two to three years experience in the industry. So you would do your three weeks training. From then you would get your interview with the cruise line. And once you've received your job offer, you can expect to join the ship within two months, two to three months on average, just to give yourself enough time to get your visa and your medical done. Then obviously you're also learning a lifelong skill, which is photography. So you might decide you want to work on ships for two to three to four years, save a lot of money, come back, Maybe you want to start your own business back in South Africa. So you could come back and be a, a wedding photographer. But the type of experience that you're going to earn on ships is totally more than enough experience to come back and be a professional photographer on land. Also, you've got to remember that on ships, everything is fast paced. So the experience that you get on a ship in six months would probably take you five years on land to experience that type of photography if you're looking at doing weddings and corporate photography and things like that. Then, as I mentioned, the interview gets set up for you, so you don't need to contact the cruise lines yourself. You don't need to go through whole, that whole process. Everything gets taken for you, and you get paid to travel the world. So who wouldn't want to get paid to travel the world? Make good, proper, tax-free dollars. Then, obviously, you make international friends. So you are going to be making friends from all over the world. And if I just think back to my time on ships, I could probably travel the whole world right now and stay with a different person in every single country around the world just from the friends I made on ships. So you really will make friends from all over the world. And those are lifelong friendships, definitely. Okay, so your experience, obviously, you're going to get support from OVC throughout this process. Um, as I mentioned, some of us and our consultants have actually done this program before. Like I said, I've done this program myself through OVC and worked on ships for three years. So I am always here to answer questions. If there's anything that you want to know, you're not quite sure what to expect, we are here to support you throughout the entire process. We will give you guidance. We will give you assistance where needed um, before your interview with the cruise line and also before your interview with our partners. We will take you through that process. All right, if we look at the cost of the program, it's approximately 25,000 Rand that you would need to budget. So if you have a look at the bottom, the three-week course is going to cost you 17,050 Rand. Though That is the fee for the 2019 course. So you would need to pay that up front to the academy here in South Africa. And then once you've completed the three weeks training and you've received your job offer from the cruise line, then you would need to go for your full medical. That medical can cost anything from 4,000 to 5,000 Rand. So we just estimated to be about 4,500 Rand. 
And then you would also pay for your visa, which is $160. So that's about 2000 to 2300 Rand at the moment, depending on the rate of exchange. And your criminal clearance will cost you about 150 Rand. Also, if you are not from the Western Cape, you would either need to find a friend in the area or you would need to set yourself up in accommodation for those three weeks. So you would be responsible for the costs of your accommodation and your meals during those three weeks of training. So if you add all those fees together, it comes to just less than 25,000 Rand. Some cruise lines would reimburse you for the medical, but we tell all of our clients to budget for this amount. If you do get some money back from the cruise line when you join the ship, see that as a bonus. But um, not all of the cruise lines do reimburse some of the fees. So budget for 25,000 Rand as a ballpark figure, and that'll be totally fine. All right. So if you, we're going to now go to questions and answers sessions. So if you do feel that you're ready to apply or you'd like some more information, then please get in touch with your closest OVC office. If you haven't already been in touch with a consultant, you can have a look on our website, ovc.co.za, and we list all of our offices with our email addresses and our contact numbers. Everything is listed on our website. All right, so does anybody have any questions? You can either unmute yourself or you can just type a question in the chat box. All right, so Mariska asks how much spending money is needed. So depending on your spending habits, if you think you're somebody who's going to go out in the port straight away and just want to start spending money, then definitely you would need to take some spending money with you. But generally your first two to three weeks on board, you wouldn't you wouldn't really be getting off the ship much. So there wouldn't really be much to spend your money on. And also, it depends from cruise line to cruise lines. Normally, you will get paid at the end of each at the end of each cruise. So some cruises are seven weeks. I mean, seven days. Some cruises are three weeks. It all depends how long your cruise is. And also, some cruise lines pay monthly. So we recommend, on average, that you take about three to five thousand rand spending money with you, convert it into dollars, just so that you've got some money to spend when you do go out in port before you get your first paycheck. But there is really no limit to how much you do need to have with you. There's no rule to say you have to take five thousand rand with you, because if you know you don't have five thousand rand to spend, you're not going to go out in the port and spend money. Obviously, you would just need to have some money with you for emergencies, like when you land, if you need to get a taxi to the airport or anything like that, you would need to have money with you and then the cruise line would reimburse you when you get online. All right. No qualification is needed at all. Um, so thank you for that question. Um, this pr program that we offer is the three-week photography training that gets done in South Africa. So you would have to get that qualification to be able to join the ship as a cruise ship photographer. So no other qualification is necessary. You don't even have to have matric. You just have to be 21 years old. And um, obviously a good sense of humor and a good personality, that is ultimately the most important thing. Does so anybody else have any other questions? Okay, cool. So thanks, guys. Thanks. So, oh, sorry, Trish. One more from Trish. Equipment needed. Okay, thanks, Trish. So if um, when you do the three weeks training, all of the equipment will be provided for you. So you don't need to have your own camera for the three weeks training. All the cameras and the lenses and everything is provided. And um, when you join the ship, there will be a brand new camera waiting for you. And that will be your camera, which you will pay back over your first contract. So throughout your six months, you'll pay back a small portion of your earnings um, a small portion will be deducted each each time you get your paycheck just to pay off your camera. And then at the end of that, once you've paid off your camera, that is your camera to keep. Okay, then another one from Mariska, the course dates. So we have a course every month. 
Um, the next course is starting in January. So that will be the 14th of January. That's a three-week course. So it will run through till the 1st of February. And then the next course after that will begin on the 18th of February. So if you guys would like to receive the dates for the entire year, just get in touch with your consultant and we'll be able to send you the schedule for that. But there is a course every month, January, February. Um, the February course will end in March. So then the next course would be April, then May. There won't be a course in June. It will then be July, August, September, and September will run through October, and then November will be the last course for next year. We also advise that you get your application in at least a month before you plan to do the training. And if there are any of you that are wanting to do the January or February course, if you can get your application into us before the end of next week, and if there is time still for our partners to do the Skype interview with you and get you accepted on the program, then you would still be eligible for the 2018 prices. So that means you would say you, it would be just over 1,000 Rand saving, but then we need to literally get your application in within the next two to three days. So if there are any, are any of you that are um, looking at doing a January or February course, please urgently get in touch with your consultant and then we can take it from there. Cool. Thanks, guys. Is there any other questions before we end off? Okay, cool. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And please do feel free to get in touch with us. Um, if you've got any questions at all, please do give us a shout. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Bye.